مهمترین دلیلی که من اومدم اینجا به خاطر اینکه مسیحی شده بودم و اونجا با مسیحیت کلا کسانی که از دین اسلام خارج بشن و به مسیحیت ایمان بیاورن اونجا فکر میکنم یه قانونی هم دارن که مرتد شناخته میشه و حکمش هم اعدامه مرتد شدن اونجا اعدامه threatened with death for converting to Christianity. 45-year-old Hamid fled Iran, leaving his wife and two daughters behind. یکشون 14 سالشه، یکشون 7 سالشه. برای حفاظت از جون خودم اومدم اینجا به این کشور پناه آوردم. Seeking sanctuary, he had no idea his voyage would see him transferred onto a hulking ship which would be buffeted by pickets and protests. Tonight, he tells us what it was really like on board the barge. We saw a big team of the guards. They were with the police and the police. We've obtained mobile phone footage of the conditions. The government says the barge will help deter small boat crossings, but we've learnt many on board came to the UK by plane, not via the channel. Hamid, not his real name, says his accommodation has been targeted by far-right groups, so he's asked us not to show his face. In Rygate. In Rygate. Yes, in Rygate. After seven months in a Rygate hotel, Hamid was given a home office letter telling him he was being moved to the Bibi Stockholm. The letter stated it wasn't detention accommodation and there'd be plenty of facilities on board, but that's not what it felt like to Hamid and others we've spoken to. The vessel has been fitted with facilities including a gym and a cinema room. The Home Office told us it's been safely used before to house refugees in Germany. There are some British people who will feel that as long as you're being looked after on board, you're getting all your meals, you can come and go as you please, then what's wrong with staying on the barge? Two days, five days, well, I can, well, everyone can five days to come back on the barge. ولی بعد از یه هفته دو هفته روزا تکراری بشه این افسردگی میاره اصلا کلا اصلا وجود قابل زندگی نیست The barge had received a rough reception the protests reflecting national divisions over immigration but after just three days the asylum seekers had to be evacuated after the discovery of the potentially deadly legionella bacteria it has floated empty ever since whilst tests are carried out the Home Secretary has been accused of presiding over a farce. We were disappointed, obviously, that we had to take people off the barge in August. Uh, we are carrying out all of the necessary checks and uh, authorizations, and once those are completed, we'll be re-embarking people as quickly as possible. This huge barge has come to be seen as a floating symbol of asylum chaos. Critics of the government see it as a holiday camp, others as a prison camp. It's understood that eventually fewer than 500 people will be moved back on board. That's less than 1% of those who are waiting for their claims to be processed. And so, despite the controversy surrounding it, this huge ship won't solve the problem of the small boats. The government's now facing a legal challenge from the Fire Brigade's union over safety concerns. Refugee charities say no asylum seekers should be moved back on. It's completely unsuitable accommodation. They are victims of torture, they are survivors of trafficking. How do you feel about the government describing organisations like yours and the lawyers you work with as lefties who are trying to frustrate their policies? You know, the right to law, the right to challenge things, this is as British as it, as it gets. This goes back to the Magna Carta. We are just making sure that people know their rights. Hamid and the other men have been told they will be returned to the BB within the next few weeks. What are your hopes and dreams for the future here in this country? The Home Office told us the barge meets all legal requirements and any asylum seeker who refuses accommodation provided for them 
may have their government support withdrawn.